Good morning as we start the Chitas of the day. Today is Friday, which is a uh, sixth, uh, uh, the sixth uh, part, the sixth reading in the Pasha's Shemini, the portion of Shemini. We're holding chapter 11, verse number one. So we'll go through this quickly as we have already learned this inside last week. The uh, the Torah laws on the kosher animals. Vedaba, verse chapter 11, verse number one. Vedaba Shalom Meshav Alayman. God spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, I mean, Layma Alayim to tell them. So now she says, on Meshav Aaron, this was to Moshe to tell Aaron, but God spoke to, Mo, to Moshe Rabbein. Lehem to tell them so they would who should they tell? So Rashi says it means that they should tell Eliezer and his son. Do, do you see? Do you mean maybe it means to tell the Jewish people? Well, it's verse number two says to tell the Jewish people. So therefore, over here it means that God the Moses, God told to Moses, and Moses told it to Aaron. Aaron, Moses and Aaron then called Eliezer and his son. He, he then told it to them. And then he ultimately told it to uh, the Jewish people. Verse number two. Davon Esau speak to the Jewish people. These are the creatures, the animals, which you shall eat. The kol behema, when every animal, it's every animal that's on the earth. So now she says, Davon Esau teach to the Jewish people. Um, uh, uh, this comes to teach us that Kulam, they are all equal shluchim in this matter. That uh, this is a that every this is the law of kashrus is a law that has no reason. It's a chukah and uh, it's a decree, and therefore it's equal on every Jew to uh, to accept upon themselves this mitzvah, whether they understand it or they don't understand. Zoysa this is the living thing. And it says, this is the living. What is the meaning by this is the living? So that means the Torah tells us that there's something different between an, a kosher and a non-kosher animal, the aspect of chayus in their living. There's something in the animal that, that a yid can connect to. And uh, therefore, this commandment was given specifically to the Jewish nation to eat specific kinds of animals. Zois Tachayer, as she says, it comes to teach us that Zois, when you say Zer, it means that the God, in essence, I mean, Moshe Rabbeinu pointed to each and every animal and to each and every fish and to each and every bird. He showed exactly what he was talking about. It was a show and tell situation. Zois Tachayer, Mikola Behema. So, Chayer is a general form. And behema is a singular. So chaya is animals. All animals. Behema is a 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 animal. Is a you know a cow, a sheep, a goat is a behema. Chaya is a general word for animals. Verse number three. Koma preses parses Any animal that has cloven hooves, and the the hooves are cloven in a way that it's split. Through the entire way, it's not like split halfway. Maligator, also one that chooses cut, but behema in the animal, in the animal uh, kingdom. This is the, the this, this is the animal that you should eat. So again, Nachi says, why say a double expression, sep- completely separate, separate, because it has to go to uh, Tsepanayim. It needs to have two who's. And that go totally through the animal. I mean, two hooves, right? Because it goes totally through the one hoof is divided totally into two hooves. My legator. So now she says an animal, these animals have a couple of stomachs and they need to constantly bring it up to back to the mouth to be able to travel to the next stomach. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, verse number four. These are the things you should not eat. In my legator, they might chew their cuts. Uh, and those who have cloven hooves. The camel. 
Imalegeru, it is choose its cut. Umafis ain't a pass, but it doesn't has it doesn't have split oops. Tamehu lachem, it's impure to you. Verse five. There's a shop in the hyrex. Imalegeru, it choose its cut. Umafis a lay a fiser, but it doesn't have completely split oops. Tamehu lachem, it's impure to you. There's a nevis, and the hair. Himalagedi, it chews its cud. In five salaya feasts, but doesn't have split oaths. To mei lachem, it's impure to you. Excuse me. Verse number seven. The pig, Kimafis Paisu, it has split hoops. Vishesa Shesa, it's completely split hoops. The gate of the eagle, but does not chew its cud. Tamehu lachem, it's unclean to you. Verse number eight. If Sodom let the chelu from their flesh, you're not allowed to eat from them. Who have lost some and from their dead bodies, loisi go. When they, if they die, doesn't make a difference if they're killed or they had a natural death. They're called an avela, a carcass, and now their carcass becomes impure. Tamehim hem lachem. So, like for example, a dog, cat, is not an impure animal until it dies. In the aspect of purity or impurity. When it dies, now if you touch it, you become impure. Number one. Number two, the Ash says, Mipsodim, it says from its flesh. This comes to teach us that only the flesh is not kosher, but the bones don't go in the same category as the flesh. So too, the bones don't impure somebody, but the flesh, the, the flesh of the animal, the Torah says. When Vos to go, why does the Torah tell us? She says, why does the Torah tell us that you're not allowed to touch the dead body? Because a regular Jew can become impure. A Kohen is not allowed to become impure. They don't want to tell you that if you want to go to the temple, you're not allowed to touch a dead body. You're not allowed to touch a dead, you're not allowed to touch a dead animal. But if you don't want to go to the temple, a regular Jew can become impure. A Kayin is not allowed to become impure, even if he doesn't want to go to a uh, to uh, to the base of Mikdash. That's why today, till today, to Kayhanim don't impurify themselves specifically, you know, intentionally. Verse number nine. And then, okay, that's the animals. The animals need to have split hooves and choose their card. Need both of them. If they have one, not the other, doesn't doesn't work. But there is number nine. Is that the chelu kamayim? This is what you see for all the water, creatures of the water. Kolosh has snapping. They have to have fins. They catch scales and scales. By yamim or by mayim. It doesn't make difference whether the oceans or the rivers. When a chalim oisam to chelu, those you shall eat. So that's the fins are are that's a, that's a, that propels them, directs them. Kash kashes is the Scales that are on a fish. Verse number 10. Who does, wherever it does not have fins and scales. Whether they're in the Biyamim, they're in the seas, in the in the rivers. Call Shayra Tamay. Anything that creeps in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the waters. We call that Shabamay, anything that lives in the water, Sheketim Lachem. So anything like the uh, sheket uh, sheretz is a is a sheretz amayim is like a, a lobster. The sheretz amayim, uh, these kind of things that crawl on the on the bottom of a crab that crawls on 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 the bottom of, of the of the sea. Verse number ten, verse number eleven. The sheket yelachem. The sorrow is a It's a revelation to you. It's not allowed to eat from its flesh. And their dead bodies you shall hold as an abomination. So Rashi says, if the shek it's you, they shall be, that means that you, you the lobster, non kosher fish mixes up between other fishes, becomes all of them become non kosher. So too, Rashi says, Mipsodom from their flesh, that will only care about the Torah, only cares about the flesh. It doesn't prohibit the bones. That's the blossom to Shkaitsun. This comes to teach us even that that he filtered out the water of other liquids. You find these little kinds of Yevushim 
Midgez. These little kinds of creatures that 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 create creation that, that float in the water. Be very careful that they, you know, but today we most of the water is filtered, that it's filtered through a system. So you're getting away water that has been filtered and cleansed out of all its living creatures that are flow, floating in the water. Verse number 12. Anything that doesn't have fins and scales, that gets an abomination to you. So Rashi says, why the Torah tells again? This the Torah tells us because there are certain fish that have the God made them that they have scales, but they lose their scales in the water. So the Torah emphasizes no, that we're talking about a fish that never had scales. If it had if you find a fish that has scales, but it loses its on its own, then it's kosher. As long as it's born, created with fins and scales, it's kosher, even though by the time you you catch it. It doesn't have uh, 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 scales. And I, uh, I forgot the name of the fish. I'm not going to say the name. I think I think I, I think Google it. There's a fish that loses its scale in the water. Verse number three. And then you go to the birds. The birds. These are the birds that are abomination. They are should not be eaten. They are an abomination. As a nation. The eagle, that's our Perez and the kite, that's Aznia and the osprey. <clears throat> they shall not be eaten. Now she says, this teaches us that you're not allowed to even feed it to a child. That's not obligated per se in the Torah mitzvahs. You're not allowed to be feed it to, to, to such a person. You're not allowed to eat it. And you're not allowed to feed it. But Torah tells us these animals, non-kosher animals, are mutter bahana. They're prohibited from eating, but you're allowed to use the allowed to, you're allowed to use you're allowed to have enough on them, whether it's to sell these animals, whether it's to feed it a dead animal to a to a to a to a non to a dog. Uh, these it's not also bahana. These animals are not prohibited from any kind of pleasure, like milk and meat. Is prohibited for any pleasure. Once I, by mistake, even mix milk and meat together, I cannot have any or not. I cannot feed it even to a dog. I have to, I have to destroy it. But these animals, you can have enough on, even though they are not kosher. Like you're allowed to, you're allowed to sell pig, for example, in the market. Yes, you can sell because the animal is not kosher, but you are allowed to have enough for a non kosher animal. Verse 14, as a dove, as a ayal, I mean, Kestler, I'm not sure, and the vulture after its species. It's called all ravens and their species. The ostrich, the jay, the sparrow hawk, and the goshawk after its species, all their species. I believe this. Thousands of species of birds, An unbelievable amount of species of birds. Because every bird has many different species to it. Like the hawk, I think, is an unbelievable amount of different kinds of hawks. Besakois, the owl, like different, many different owls. Besak Shalof and the gull, Besak Yanshuf and the little owl. Verse 18, Besak Tishemis and the bat, Besaka and the starling. Verse 19, the stork, the stork and the heron after its pieces, the saduchvis, the hoopy, the tully, and the tully. Question mark, what's, what's a tully? It's a, the bat, we already mentioned the bat. Not sure what a tully is. Called Sheretzoif. Oh, now the, the, the title continues. So those are the birds. So in general, today, what, how do you know what's a kosher bird? So as the Gemara explains, it's very hard to tell which is a kosher bird. We're not sure exactly all the, 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 the species of birds and where they come from and exactly how do we know what's a kosher bird. Therefore, birds, we have to have a Kabbalah, so to say. We have to have a tradition 
of what's a kosher bird, to know exactly what's a kosher bird. And before we, the, the sages have to go picked out you know certain birds, which is a chicken or uh, a chicken, or whatever, a uh, turkey. Some rabbis, the Shalah, the famous Rabbi Shalah, prohibited on his children, his grandchildren to eat a turkey. But most Jews eat turkey, a dove, a duck. These are the basic kosher birds, and we don't eat any other birds that we don't have what's called a Kabbalah, a tradition that we know that they are kosher birds. Now the Torah goes into verse 20, goes into the laws of a grasshopper. If anybody's interested, all flying insects that work on four, check it to the it's an abomination. So these are the these are the like flies, hornets, and mosquitoes, and locusts. Then the Torah says, 21, these certain insects that fly, that have four legs, which they have joint legs like extension. That's a grasshopper. It goes higher than its feet. Goes, the legs go higher than the body, but not allowed to jump. And those are grasshoppers. So certain grasshoppers are allowed. Now, the Torah is going to go into, tell us which are the grasshoppers. But as Rashi, right, it tells us over here in the big Rashi that today we are not bucky. We are not very qualified to know the different kinds of grasshoppers. Therefore, most rabbis have prohibited Jews from eating any kind of grasshoppers. Now, there are some Jews that even till today that they have a tradition, they have rabbis who have said that this grasshopper and that grasshopper is kosher. But in general, the law is that you don't eat grasshoppers because it's very hard to discern the way the Torah wants, as you'll soon see in verse 22. The Torah wants a specific kind of grasshopper. And it's very hard to know which that specific grasshopper, if it fits exactly the Torah's qualification. That's Eli. So that's a... Um, uh, it's, it's an actual right because there are four signs in a grasshopper. Number one has four legs. Number two has four wings. Number three, which are joined legs like extension. After that, has, it has some these leg extensions. And number four is the wings that cover the majority of the body. So they have to have four signs to a grasshopper that's kosher. Verse 22, I say, believe me, no. From this locust category, you may eat the following. The red locust to its species. And the yellow locust to its species. And the white locust to its species. So these are the only uh, grasshoppers that are kosher. But they have all these four signs. Verse 23. Any other flying insect that has four legs is an abomination to you. And Asha says, why does it have four legs? What happens to have five legs? If it has five legs, it's kosher. You find a grasshopper. It has five legs, it'll be kosher. Verse 23. And these, all these animals, you become impure. If you touch a dead, non-kosher animal, you become impure until the evening. Go to the mikveh. Whoever carries their dead body, not only do they become impure, Yechab is begotten. His clothes become impure, impure, and he becomes tummy until the evening. Verse 26. Any animal that chews its cut, but it's not completely spit. And it doesn't chew its cut. They're impure to you. And if you touch them when they're dead, you are clean. You become tummy. You're unclean. You have to wait till the evening. And go to the mikvah. Verse 20. Any, any, and among the animals that walk on four legs. A dog. 
any animal that walks on its pores is unclean to you. Anyone who touches their carcass is unclean until Verse 28 and Nice is the loss of you carry a dead dog. You find a base of Midash, you have to the Chabez, but God of you have to immerse that your clothes becoming clean. Tame Adarev and you're unclean till the evening. Mayim Heim Lachem, they are unclean to you, self understood, when they are dead. And these are the unclean thing, creeping creatures that creep on the ground. A weasel, a mouse, a toad after it's eaten. So now she says, all of these statements of uncleanliness are not referring to revision of eating because that we know that already, but rather to the actual uncleanliness, meaning that a person will become unclean by touching them. And he will consequently be prohibited from eating truma if he's a coin, or from going into the sanctuary if he's a regular Jew. Verse 30. Anaka, the hedgehog. Akoyach, and the camelon. The salata, the lizards. We see a lot of lizards in Florida. Akhoymesh, the snail. Akhoymesh, the mole. Verse 31. They are impure to you. All those things, those creeping creatures. Whoever touched them while they're dead, if my daughter become impure. Verse 32. If any of these dead creatures fall upon anything, we call creates whether it's a, a vessel of, of a, 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 a wood vessel, a baggage. Or whether it's a garment or your or any kind of a hide, a sock or any kind of sack, poke, bahem, anything that is considered a vessel, bamaim yuvai, and needs to come into the mikvah, needs to go into the mikvah to be purified. It always needs to wait to the evening. The mikvah, you always need to wait to the evening, even though you went to the mikvah earlier. You need to wait always the evening. You always need to wait a day to the end of the day for the new day to start to become pure. That's in general, you'll see later on the laws of impurity. They always need to wait to the evening. Even today, a woman always goes to the mikvah in the evening. So the end of the day, that's when the end of the day is. So, uh, so that says that again, we're talking about Tumma, we're talking about Mayim. Uh, he's impurity truma ad erev until the evening matar be erev hashemesh and he will clean, come clean and there. So therefore, women go like I said, go back to the law today. Women go to the mikvah in the evening. If for whatever reason they have to go to the mikvah during the day, some, sometimes we uh, allowed they would still would be impure until the evening. I have a question, Rabbi. Yes. Oh, okay. So, say you catch a mouse in a trap, or there's a dead bug on the floor. I mean, you become impure. Yep. So, what what do you do? No, yeah, we don't have that problem today because we're all impure anyway. Oh. We don't have, okay. Okay. We don't have the problem today. I mean, not that I would pick up a mouse, but maybe a bug. <laughs> you don't have that problem today. Okay. Good. <laughs> if she comes, like you're worried, we'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> For regular Jew, it's not a problem either because it only only has a problem to go into the base of Okay. Thank okay. You. And also, you only become pure till the evening. You don't come. You know, that's it. You go. To, you wait till the evening, uh, or, or you got to go to mikveh. You wait till the evening and you're pure. Okay. We're holding the Tanya of the day. We're still in chapter forty-two, part number four. Alkudabe is trying to impress upon us the aspects of meditation to meditate. On the greatness of God to everybody to his capacity, his capability. After that, it says, now therefore call unto me so every Jew, be whoever it may be. When he ponders upon this a considerable time each day. 
את שהקדוש ברוך הוא, קדוש ברוך הוא מולי ממש את הילד ותתן. ה-God fills the higher and lower worlds. ואת השמיים ואת הארץ ממש. כן, you have to, you have to, the Alter Rebbe, because this is something you, people say, but the question is, do they believe that the Eivishter fills the world? He's everywhere in the world. There's not a place, there's not a situation that God is not there. Mole ha'aretz kevoidah. The world is filled with his glory and the action of it adds mamash. Not in theory, not in hope, not as a wish, but mamash. Really, that's the way it is. The Abishter God is right in front of you. You don't got to look up. You don't got to look someplace else. He's standing right in front of your nose. He's actually within you because he gives you life. So he's within you, he's in front of you, he's on top of you, he's on the side of you. He is everywhere. And not only is he everywhere, that he looks and he seeks. And again, not only he looks, he has to take a special look. But again, as we explained before, the Abish God knows everything from himself. And everything is important to him. There's not something is more important or less important. Every pain, every suffering, every happiness, every, everything he feels. Every word you say, he hears every thought you thought. He, the second you think it, he thinks it. The whole side of your suffering. And every step he feels. That's it. You have to understand this and think about it. It's not a concept. It's not a philosophy. It's the fact. The Avishta God is there. He's part of it. He feels it. He hears it. He feels it. He sees it. It's him. Think about that. Over and over. Think about it. Comprehend it. You have to, as I, if you think about it an hour a day, it's going to break his heart. It's not possible. That if he thinks about it surely and he, he thinks about it as a real thing, that it's not going to open his heart. And he's not going to have fear of God. Even if you're going to have a, a superficial meditation. That's the problem. We don't think about God. We need to think about it. Not just think about God as some concept up there. Think about God as something right here. Right within you, right feeling you, hearing you, seeing you, feeling you. So it's gonna, there's no question that this thought is going to have some effect on you. So therefore, at any time and any moment, they will want to be focused when he, when he understands that God is above him. God is right there. He's going to want to do the right thing. Machshava, whether it's in thought, dibur, ma'isa, in speech and action. That he should not go against God. which God fills the world. Thing is, we don't believe God's watching. We don't believe God cares. We don't believe God is interested. As I mentioned before, Rabbi Echel Mezake, before he died, he said to his students, I wish you would be afraid of God like you're afraid of another person. Because the other person, you see him looking. You see that he's watching you. You're afraid. But God, you don't think he's watching you. You think he doesn't care. This is the meaning of the verse. Of what is God is asking for you? Kill the David is asking, fear me. I'm there. You're like ignoring me. <laughs> I'm there right there. You're ignoring me. You're making believe I'm not here. Isn't that like terrible? That I have God right here, make ignoring the guy. Make him believe, like you imagine another person is right there, you're ignoring him. It's very insulting. Abish is right there, and we're ignoring him. That's why Abish is simple. That's why the only thing I ask is, look, don't ignore me. And if you don't ignore me, then you would have respect of me. You'd be in awe of me. Because if you don't ignore me, you'll know that I'm... <laughs> 
I, I am God, and I'm right there. If you can imagine a king standing next to you, so lots of kama kama, surely for sure. So God is standing next to you. She yida ha mevi lekia mitzvah mother, which this fear leads to fulfillment of God's commandments. This sore made out from going away from bad by Satan even doing good. The yida tata. This is a low level of fear. I'm not talking about great fear over here. Great concept of of greatness of uh, of mamish being a, a unbelievable like a like, you know, like I'm totally bottled to God. We're about simple stuff. To be able to be good, to do the right thing, and not do the bad, not do anything wrong. And that's what we're looking for. God be Moshe. And that's what the mission says. That's what the Gemara answers. Is Yira a small thing? And the Gemara answers, to Moshe Rabbeinu is small. What does that mean? It's to Moshe Rabbeinu is small. To the Moshe Rabbeinu in every single one of us, as the author ever says. There's a Moshe Rabbeinu in every single one. What's the Moshe Rabbeinu in every single one of us? Das. Our wisdom. Moshe Rabbeinu gave Das to the Jewish people. The capability of understanding and having a knowledge of God. Das is knowledge. In, 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 the, in relation to the quality of Das, it's easy. If you had Das, God is right there. Then you, then it's not a big thing to have fear of God. Problem is, you don't have das. But if you had das, if you use the quality of Moshe, which is comparison to das, which Moshe Rabbeinu gave Moses gave the knowledge to Jewish people, the capability of knowledge, each person according to his capacity. So if I have the capability of das. Then it's an easy thing. That's the Gemara's answer. Mil says Zutrisi, then it becomes an easy thing. So the Gemara answers, yes, it is easy if you have Das. It is easy if you have knowledge. Because Das is the faculty which connects the hidden understanding of the heart. With revelation and actual thought. As it's known to the students of Kabbalah, which we are all the students of Kabbalah. We're in Chsidis, we're in Kabbalah. So we're all students of the learning of Kabbalah. That can, concludes the Tanya of the day. My friends, today is the 27th day. Of uh, this one, I almost lost my days, which is in chapter 120, and it goes from chapter 120 to 134. 120 to 134, and you would have done the chitas of the day. I wish you all a beautiful, wonderful, happy Shabbos, gorgeous Shabbos, a wonderful this week is Shabbos of Barchem. As we bless the we bless the new month, the month of year. God bless you all. Have a wonderful Shabbos. God bless you. We'll see you from Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and we'll learn Chitas. Thank you, Rabbi. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. My pleasure.